morning. Uh, my name is Mark Trudy. I'm the section chair of our hepatobiliary and pancreatic surgery uh, division here at Mayo Clinic, and I have a specific uh, surgical interest in the management of patients with pancreatic cancer. Pancreas cancer is a very difficult and challenging uh, cancer, and the reason being is that it tends to spread at a very early stage. And thus, so if we look historically, you know, over the last few decades, we've seen essentially very minimal improvements in survival in pancreas cancer, contrary to those other tumors that you uh, did describe. However, over the last few years, particularly the last five years, we've had significant advances uh, for this tumor uh, and for a number of reasons. The first and foremost, improved chemotherapies, which are markedly more responsive and therefore patients' tumors are, are uh, responding and shrinking. Uh, to these chemotherapies. We've had improvements in radiation therapies, and the most significantly, at least what I'm interested, is really sort of pushing the envelope in terms of what we can offer patients from a surgical perspective. Those patients that were previously considered unresectable are now candidates for a potentially curative operation. Well, we know that patients who can get their tumors removed live significantly longer than patients who can't get their tumors removed. In addition, it's the only modality that can potentially provide long-term survival and cure for these patients. Traditionally, the only patients that derive benefit from an operation to remove their tumor are patients whose cancers has not spread beyond the pancreas to other sites, what we call metastasis. So to the liver, to the lungs, or the lining of the abdomen, which are the most common. Unfortunately, 50% of patients at initial diagnosis, they are already in this uh, metastatic category. So at a minimum, the other 50% of patients are at least, at the minimum, potential candidates for an operation. However, of those 50%, only about 15% have historically been considered for an operation in that their tumors were localized to the pancreas and not spread outside involving critical structures. Uh, about a third of patients in general have no evidence of spread of the cancer, but their tumor has grown outside of the pancreas to involve critical blood vessels. They have traditionally not been considered for resection because of technical inability to remove the, the, the cancer without a, leaving cancer cells behind. And actually, these are the proportion of patients that we've been focusing on over the last several years here at Mayo Clinic. The first and foremost is you know, everyone who's seen, they get a full staging examination, history and physical examination. Many of these patients present with significant pain, weight loss, and debilitation. So the first thing we have to have a good understanding of what is their actual stage of disease. Then we work to optimize any medical conditions they have, improve their nutrition, improve their physical status. And then the first line of therapy for these more complex advanced tumors is uh, chemotherapy. Yeah, so after they complete their chemotherapy, then they move on to the next component, which would be radiation therapy. And what radiation does is it applies radiation to not just the main tumor, but the surrounding structures. And that allows a subsequent operation to have the most maximal benefit. So it depends on, on what sequence they, they go in. We know that patients who get an operation for pancreas cancer, those patients that do the best are patients that get multimodal therapy, not just an operation alone. They need also chemotherapy. Some patients are also candidates for radiation. And it depends on the sequence. Traditionally, patients who are operable would have an operation followed by subsequent chemotherapy and potentially radiation. We're seeing a significant reversal of that sequence where patients are getting their chemo and radiation prior to their operation. We do know there's a significant survival benefit for getting chemotherapy after surgery in patients who hadn't had chemotherapy before. We still have no significant data on chemotherapy after surgery when they've had preoperative chemotherapy, but that is still our recommendation in patients who are otherwise uh, uh, candidates for such therapies just due to the inherent risk of this disease. Anna knife is something called ir irreversible electroporation. Uh, it's a modality where probes are placed within the tumor uh, a current is generated and the, the membranes of the tumor then uh, dissolve. It is a, another form of an ablative type therapy. Uh, we're trying to figure out how we can incorporate this into the management of patients with pancreas cancer. There's been some data of using nano knife in patients whose tumors cannot technically be removed, and there is some data suggest that they may have some improved survival and at least potentially may offer uh, local control. This is something that we're uh, considering offering. I just had a meeting last week about incorporating this into our practice. But this should not be considered a replacement for chemotherapy and a potential aggressive operation. Those have been well established to be uh, far superior. But this is another potential technology that may allow another alternative modality for patients whose tumors have already exhausted other uh, efforts.